Why, why, why do people bite on this marketing? I made this graph to try to understand it better myself. Let me break it down. So on your x-axis, you have how obnoxious the marketing is. We measure this in Lambos. On your y-axis, you have revenue from trading courses. The curve goes like this, which is funny, right? Because you'd think there'd be some cutoff point where the marketing is so blatantly misleading that people would stop paying attention to it. Not true. The more obnoxious it is, the more course revenue you make. Going back on this app again. This is the last time I will ever return. It feels like the whole trading TikTok community has slowly started to die over the last few months. Probably because if you were following the biggest TikTok day traders advice, you lost all of your money in January. Then again, if you have a Robinhood account or view any finance content on the internet, you probably lost all of your money in January anyway. Always trade with the trend. Right here, we're looking at the M15 time frame, clearly in an uptrend, right? We have higher highs, we have higher lows, we have higher highs, we have higher lows. This is the section we are actually looking at right there. So we are actually in a downtrend right now. And what we were seeing here on the 15 minute time frame is just a pullback. So during this this time, you really want to be focused on sell trades. Okay, like this actually brings to light a good point. And I think you could zoom out even further and what you'd find is that the stock you're trading is on an even bigger trend up or down, which introduces a huge problem. If you zoom out far enough, what you'll find is that the stock you're trading is largely correlated to some broad index. Beyond that, when the market crashes, this correlation only tends to increase. So in a lot of cases, what appears to be returns based on some kind of strategy is actually just the entire market going up. Everyone is a genius in a bull market. Cool, yeah, so just quickly double your money. Why the fuck would you do anything but double your money if it was that easy? I always like to imagine these TikToks in the context of a professional financial advisor giving this advice. Cool, yeah, so we'll just double your money and then put- wait, what? I just put all your savings in Rivian. But should we diversify or maybe- it's all gone now. I don't know why, but this time I just have no patience for this app. It was at least funny before. Options trading is technically like a financial starting point. A lot of finance- Now it's bad financial advice that's not even funny. If I'm gonna lose all my money, the least you could offer me is a little laugh. We had some of the biggest gains in the stock market today, you guys, making history over a thousand percent in pure profits. Check out the gains. The last 20 minutes before the market closed, I told my whole team that SPY was going to dump. Check this out. And instantly the contract Tracks moved over a thousand percent in pure profits. When you're ready to take your education to the next level, you guys click that link in the bio and come learn with the team. Ah, yes, of course. All the funds in the world devoting millions of dollars and hours of time trying to predict the movements of the S&P, all for the tiniest fraction of a percent of alpha. But no, Eric the DGen of TikTok has determined the Determine the secret code to perfectly predicting the top of the fucking S&P. <laughs> It seems like the TikTok day trading space is dying. It's like the NASDAQ dropped 10% and the entire ecosystem just imploded. Now there's a power vacuum. Eric the DGen and the few <laughs> Eric the DGen and the few other remaining survivors are picking up the weapons of the fallen and proceeding to the front lines. Only for the next wave of unsuspecting victims to open up a Robin Hood account and go on TikTok. Speaking of Robinhood, I decided to put some money into Robinhood because I want to make a good trade. One that's based on evidence. I realized that instead of talking about the thousands of reasons why these strategies won't work, maybe it makes more sense to put something forward that will work. But it's important to understand what I mean when I say it works. What I'm actually putting forward is not a trading strategy. Instead, it's a practical example using observations of empirically validated market patterns and a method of thinking that might allow you to come to a profitable conclusion yourself. Because if I had a money printing strategy, I'd be printing money with it, not making videos explaining it to other people. If TikTok's biggest day trader had a money printing strategy, he wouldn't be selling courses. If Eric the DGen had a money printing strategy, he'd be- Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure he actually does. I swear I saw Eric the DGen on that greatest investors of all time list. All right, this might get really dense. The option, a hedging tool used to offload risk, or a fun leverage thing that you can use to gamble on the direction of a stock in Robinhood. Yes, it just depends on who's buying and for what reason, which brings us right to earnings season. 
Feeling like Shakespeare apparently today. A big catalyst, like a company reporting quarterly earnings, brings big uncertainty, and sometimes big moves. The retail crowd wants to gamble on the move of the stock with options, and the money managing crowd wants to hedge the move of the stock with options. Conveniently, earnings are happening right now. After scanning different companies reporting earnings in the coming days, something caught my interest. EA. This is a graph of straddle prices. So imagine EA is reporting earnings after close on the first. You buy a call and a put with the same strike and expiration so you can profit if the stock goes up or down. All right, that joke has been hammered into the dirt at this point, but it was in the other TikTok video, so I felt obligated to say it. No, you of course don't profit if the stock goes up or down. You profit if implied volatility increases or realized volatility increases more than the theta decay of both options. It's kind of complicated, but not critical to understand at this point in time. This is a graph of the cumulative profit or loss if you were to buy one of these straddles the day before EA earnings and then sell it at market close the next day. So take this earnings announcement on January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Do any of you guys have to count the months on your fingers to try to figure out a date like this? Yeah, me neither. Take this earnings announcement on October 29th. If you were to have held this straddle through earnings, it would have lost 30% of its value. And as you can see, these straddles lose money remarkably consistently, anywhere from 15 to 30% on average. In fact, there have only been three earnings in the last four years when the straddle has made money. If you were to have bought a straddle before every EA earnings report for the last four years, you would have lost over 180% on your invested money. So what if instead of buying them, we flip this upside down and sell them? See, inverse your every intuition. Now the line is going up. A good start, but until we figure out why it's working so consistently, we're just claiming that past performance predicts future results. Something that always works. Next step, due diligence. Um, I'm just gonna skip this step because <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so some good things and some bad things here immediately. Our implied move is greater than both our average move and average implied move. The market's forecast of volatility during EA earnings is bigger than it usually is. This is a double edged sword. Relative to our average realized move, there's a larger theoretical edge, but the market should be efficient, which means if option prices are implying a larger move than the average implied move, there must be some kind of reason. But Ben, if our implied move is greater than our average realized move by around 20%, doesn't that mean all we have to do is structure a trade to sell this implied volatility and do this consistently over the next few EA earnings cycles to realize that 20% edge? That could work, but with only 20 data points, you can't draw any statistically significant conclusions, which has never stopped me in the past and won't stop me now, but let's look into this a little deeper, at least for some confirmation bias. Now, I'm not legally allowed to make money trades so if I see something that looks like an edge I could make money from, I immediately assume that for one reason or another, it probably doesn't exist. A lot of people asked me in previous videos where you can get this chart. This is a platform called Predicting Alpha. It's a trade analysis terminal that also has a four-part education program with some really in-depth live trade breakdowns. Haha, <laughs> Ben's finally trying to sell a course. You can clown me, it's funny, clown me. But just hear me out for a second. I actually used the platform for a while before reaching out to see if they wanted to partner. They usually offer a two-week free trial. If you use the link in the description, you can get a 30-day free trial where you have access to all the education and the trading platform. You can literally sign up, do the entire education, and if you don't like the platform, just cancel your membership. Who offers you that in the trading space? Motherfuckers will tell you they're going to make you a millionaire, charge you $250 up front with no refunds, just to tell you to buy when it's about to bounce off the 180-day SMA. If you do sign up, I'd highly recommend recommend watching this live Tesla trade breakdown. It's in the diamond level of the education section. This guy Jordan, who teaches a lot of the education, runs a family trading desk that made over $100,000 on that trade alone. The link in the description will get you 30 days 100% free. Try it out, see what you think. You can cancel at any point before the 30 days are up free of charge. So there's this study that tested the returns of straddles around earnings, similar to what we're observing right here. For example, what happens if you buy one of these straddles three days before earnings and then sell it the day of the announcement. As it turns out, you might be able to make money doing that. However, what's also notable is that holding the straddle for a full day after earnings returns less than if you sell it on the release date. Basically, this just in
indicates that straddles lose value from the day of the earnings announcement to after the earnings are announced. That means if we sell these straddles the day before earnings, they should on average lose value and make us money. You know, in theory. The same way that, in theory, trading actually makes you money. But Ben, why don't we just use the best performing strategy as outlined in the research? Buy a straddle three days before earnings and sell it back right before the report. That would be a really good thing to look into. As stated in the paper, this is more of an observation of a pattern and less a complete trading strategy. But all it might take is narrowing this down a little further to find something really interesting. For example, the paper states that stocks with low option volume and higher transaction fees see higher straddle returns. Maybe you could backtest buying a straddle three days before earnings on every small cap growth stock in the financial technology space. If that doesn't work, maybe you could try value stocks or biotech. There's a million ways you could do it. For the sake of this video and more so this convenient example with EA I found, I'm going to be on the short side. Anyway, there's this guy, Yoon Sinclair, he ran an options trading hedge fund. They actually do an interview with him in the Predicting Alpha Education, and he describes it as such. So I just think there's an edge there in selling. Pretty much just sell everything. <laughs> when in doubt, sell all. Like this, this earnings cycle hasn't been very good, but the last earnings cycle was fantastic. Mm -hmm. So it's a very volatile way to go through life, but that seems to be where all the edge is. I know, I hate to keep plugging this so aggressively, but the idea of an earnings risk premium fits so perfectly with my risk taking that I had to bring it up. When there's evidence from smart people that there's a method to this madness, I have to put it forward as legal protection for when my friends and family try to make the case that I'm clinically insane. This converts you from a psychotic lunatic studying magical charts for a lower hourly rate than a McDanks worker to a quantitative researcher exploiting systematic risk premia and equity options. Okay, so back to EA. Why might this exist? Most likely, just risk transfer. People will pay to protect against extreme events. Now, in a lot of cases, that edge might not be large enough to actually make money from, especially when considering the cost of entering your trades. But maybe this is one of the places where it is. In this case, I would still make the trade just based on this idea of risk transfer and our implied move being larger than our average implied move. But once again, guys, I lose money consistently. You shouldn't take my word on this stuff. Back in Robin Hood, I decided to price out the at the money straddle. I also decided to write the nearest dated options. This means the implied earnings move makes up a larger portion of our options option premium. However, it also gives us more exposure to the realized volatility of the underlying through gamma. Gamma is like, this is gamma. Imagine shooting an option with gamma radiation, like you have this nice gentle option that won't hurt you, and then gamma comes along and now you live in a box behind subway. Option returns are non-linear due to gamma's relation with delta, and that's enough for today. Let's just make the fucking trade. What do you know? We actually made money. It's important to clarify here that this actual profit is somewhat misleading. It's another isolated example of good returns that means absolutely fucking nothing in the grand scheme of things. This will implode if you do it consistently. On the bright side, if history is any indicator, the net of your implosions and profits like this one should leave you with a positive expected value. But the actual edge you're realizing is much smaller than this lucky $700 profit. I wanted to make a list of some practical ideas you could take away from this. There's not a whole lot of research backing this idea that shorting volatility through earnings is profitable. There is undoubtedly an edge here, but whether that edge is large enough to make a meaningful amount of profit is unclear. However, the fact that there's really not a lot of research about this might mean there could be untapped potential here. TikTok. You probably shouldn't go on there for financial advice. Unless, of course, you want to be a stock market millionaire. I've gotten lucky twice. No one on YouTube knows what they're doing. YouTube finance likes to act like it's above TikTok, but I think as YouTubers we need to take some advice from finance TikTok and zoom out.